With a bunch of strong new cavalry added to Warhammer 3, we have to wonder which one is the best. Which is strongest and can beat all the others? Well, that's what we're going to find out by smashing all the strongest cavalries of each faction into each other. Here's who's made it in. For Cathay, the Great Longma Riders. For Khorne, it's the Skull Crushers. For Kislev, it's obviously War Bear Riders. Even Nurgle's making an appearance with Pox Riders. The Ogres bringing Crushers with great weapons to the party. Slanesh brings the Seekers of Hearts, the Heart Seekers. And Zinch is looking to rip and tear with Doom Knights. So we're going to smash all these units into each other, mark up their wins and losses on this here graph, and we will see which one is the best. Is there any one of these units that can beat every other unit in this competition? Let's find out. We're going to kick it off with some Toads and the Heart Seekers. Now, the Pox Riders, especially here, are a unit that are not really designed for this kind of competition. They have an anti-infantry bonus. They're obviously supposed to be fighting infantry, not cavalry. So this isn't a great competition for them, but they're very sturdy. They have a lot of HP. Hasn't really helped them here, though, because the Heart Seekers have a lot of armor-piercing damage, and they hit pretty damn hard. And these Toads are struggling quick, and it's looking like the end for the Toads already. But... Pox Riders are the cheapest unit in the competition, so we couldn't really expect too much from them. I thought maybe they might do okay here as the Heart Seekers don't have any armor on and they don't have armor piercing damage, the Pox Riders, but unfortunately, no. What about the Toads then against the Great Longma Riders? Now they have the advantage of being flying and we're going to let them use that. They're going to get to use their charge from flying when the enemy won't be able to charge them back, so no charge bonus for the enemy units. The Longmas haven't done a great deal of damage though on their initial charge. They do have a pretty beefy charge bonus at 75, but they're really designed as a flying shock cavalry, which means they need to cycle charge a lot. Charge in, stay there for 10 or 15 seconds, then get out of there and do the same over and over again. And much like the Pox Riders, they're not greatly designed for this competition. They're an anti-infantry unit. They don't have armor piercing damage. They really need to cycle charge to get the most out of them. And as you can see here, they're struggling to take down the Pox Riders. They can't get enough damage output on them. The Pox Riders also have Poison, which is going to slow down the enemy's damage output, which is making it even harder here for the Longma to really get damage on the Pox Riders. And as you can see, this one is wearing on a long whole time, both down to about half health. It's a fairly even fight. Could go either way, though. But what we're learning here is that Great Longmer A, really aren't that great against cavalry, but also really aren't great in prolonged combat. You really don't want to leave this unit in prolonged combat, pull it away, cycle charge it, let them keep getting the charge bonus to be able to make the most of them. And I think that's what's allowing the Pox Riders to stay in this, is that this is their kind of fight. This kind of grindy, slow, wear down the enemy fight is what they want and need. And why this is extra embarrassing for the Longmer is because they cost 500 more than the Pox Riders. So they should really be winning this kind of fight, but because they're so outmatched in the style of the fight, it's really not working for them, and they are indeed going to lose to the Pox Riders. So that wasn't their kind of fight. Let's give them something more evenly matched. Zinch's Doom Knights are a kind of similar unit to the Great Longma Riders. They both don't have armor piercing. They're both flying. They both benefit from cycle charging, as we just said about the Great Longma and the Doom Knights. They have that shield, so it's benefit for them to fall out of combat for a little bit. Also, they have a pretty big charge bonus, although not as good as the Great Longmas. But we can see here, it's pretty even. The Longma have managed to get through the barrier of the Doom Knights fairly quickly, which is going to start allowing them to get the damage on. But over time, the Doom Knights are going to start to creep ahead, and I think that's because they have slightly more melee attack than the Longmas do, so that advantage over time is just added up and has allowed them to win this fight. It is pretty close though, the Longma not far behind, the Doom Knights are slightly more expensive as well, but only just. But this unfortunately is going to lead to Cathay being the worst unit in this competition once again. We did the infantry version of this, I'll link that at the end of the video, and we found that Cathay had the worst infantry unit there in Celestial Dragon Guard, although once again, in fairness to them, it wasn't really a competition the Celestial Dragon Guard were well designed for. But from this, we can gather our bottom two, which is the Great Longma Riders with zero wins against anybody, but the Pox Riders able to at least beat the Great Longma Riders and take one win, which is pretty good for them as they are the cheapest unit in the competition by a fair amount. We'll look at the prices of the units at the end and compare them and talk about anything that seems a bit off with the pricing. For now though, on to the middle two. Who's it going to be? Well, let's see what the Ogres can do their first fight in this competition against also another first timer the Corn Skull Crushers. Both big, heavy, hard-hitting units. Although the Ogres, they pretty much dwarf everybody. They make everybody look tiny, even these massive Skull Crushers. 
Damage wise though, Ogres are taking an early lead. The Skull Crushers can't quite keep up. Both units have armor piercing, so both capable of a lot of damage output, but the Ogres have the advantage of an anti-large bonus, which obviously makes them perfect for this kind of competition. Unfortunately for the Skull Crushers, it looks like they're the ones getting their skulls crushed today, and their skulls will indeed be going to the Skull Throne. So I guess that's technically a victory for them, but ultimately it's a loss. The Ogres, too beefy. All right, shake it off, corn boys, shake it off. Doom Knights are coming. Let's try them out against the Skull Crushers. No charge bonus for the Skull Crushers, though, which probably is going to hurt them, but no armor piercing damage for those Doom Knights, and certainly lots of armor to get through on the Skull Crushers, but it's not the same problem for the Skull Crushers as they do have armor piercing. And even with the Doom Knight's ton of armor, it's not really going to help them here because of that armor piercing damage. So we'll see. Maybe they can simply outlast them and outgrind them. But without armor piercing damage, it's probably going to be difficult. And the last for the Doom Knights, they're not quite able to punch through the armor of the Skull Crushers as they do get beaten fairly decisively by the Skull Crushers. Still about half health left for all the Skull Crushers. They've done a fair good job, the Doom Knights, but not good enough. So the Skull Crushers winning some, losing some. Let's try them out now against the good old bear cavalry of Kislev. The Corn Skull Crushers are one of the most expensive units in this competition. They're more expensive than these here bears. The bears, though, do have an anti-large bonus, so that's going to help them out. Both units have armor piercing damage, though, so both able to get through each other's thick hides or thick armor. Both putting out a lot of damage very quickly. Both got big charge bonuses, so that's helping them as well. But it looks like the bears pulling ahead pretty quickly. It is a fairly even fight, though. The Bears are taking losses. This could be the decider on whether the Corn Boys make it into the top three or whether they're going to be stuck in the middle two. They're wavering here. These other two not looking so good. Bears having the advantage, numbers advantage, to the Skull Crushers, but not sure that's helping them enough against the high HP of each Bear model. They don't go down easy. And as we can see, the Skull Crushers once again getting their Skulls crushed. This is not a good day for them. They're all going home with their skulls between their legs. What? So those bears were cheating with their anti-large bonus. Let's fight something fair, armor-piercing on armor-piercing damage only. And these puny heart seekers with no armor should be no trouble for the good old skull crushers, who do cost 400 more than the heart seekers, by the way. But the heart seekers not going down easy. They're putting up some serious damage very quickly. They're currently outdoing the skull crushers in damage. These Skull Crushers here have taken way more damage. They're down to about a third of their health left. Well, the Heart Seekers are only at half health. So more damage output from the Heart Seekers. And these Corn Boys are really struggling today. They are not having a good day. Maybe it's an off day. I don't know. Maybe they didn't have their Corn Flakes this morning. But whatever it is, they are struggling. And they are looking pretty poor for one of the most expensive units in this competition. And as I say, they are 400 more expensive than the Heart Seekers. Yet they're getting pretty badly dumped on right now. And fairly comfortably as well. The Heart Seekers still have about a quarter of their health left. It's not like it's super close. This is just goddamn embarrassing for the Skull Crushers. So fair to say they're not making it into the top three. But let's see what the Heart Seekers can do against the Doom Knights. No charge though. So that's going to hurt them. The Doom Knights flying in. They do get their charge bonus of course as they charge down from the sky. They do put out a fair bit of damage fairly quickly as well. Barrier gone for the Doom Knights, so they're going to start taking some actual damage now from the Heart Seekers. But they've lost about a third of their health before they're able to start damaging the Doom Knights. It's going to be a little bit of a very short war of attrition, but unless those Heart Seekers can turn around their damage output, they do have the armor piercing damage to get through the Doom Knights' armor. But I think what's going to save the Doom Knights here is that while they don't have armor piercing damage, well, they don't need it in this fight. And this is why they are going to win this fight where they lost to the Corn Skull Crushers because they didn't have the armor piercing. Here, they don't need the armor piercing. So they're able to win this pretty comfortably, beating down the Heart Seekers. Although taking a fair bit of damage themselves, the Heart Seekers not going down easy by any means. But unfortunately for them, Doom Knights are going to rule the day here. And with that, we get our middle two, which is going to be the Skull Crushers and the Doom Knights, both have three wins, but also three losses. So pretty even in terms of their wins and losses, but we do need to remember that Doom Knights are cheaper than Skull Crushers. So that's why they're gonna get the fourth place spot and Skull Crushers for their abysmal performance today, going in the fifth place position. That leaves us with the top three then of Warbear Riders, Heart Seekers and Crushers with great weapons. Let's see who's the best. Let's kick it off with some big old bears against the Heart Seekers. Coming in hot, both have big charge damage. Strong hits on the impact. Oh, this demonette's not coming home for Christmas. She's literally in the ground. 
Both taking a fair bit of damage early though. The Heartseekers coming off a little bit worse. That's likely due to their lack of armor. Also remember the armor piercing and anti-large bonus for the bears. The Heartseekers do have poison though and magic attacks. Not that that's going to help them here, but may have helped them against other units. But we see some wavering from both sides here. Now the Warbear Riders, they have the Buy Our Blood ability as a Kislev unit, which means they'll be unbreakable for 30 seconds when they would normally route. So that's going to help them stay in this fight longer and may help the bears to win some of these fights. The middle one looking pretty close. Those heart seekers on their last legs. Wavering from the bears still. Wavering over here though from the heart seekers. These bears getting the better of the heart seekers here. Stabbing them down. Slapping them down. There we go. The banishing beginning. And the other two have been banished already. There we go. Although these bears have routed at the same time. I guess that's still a win for them. They routed after the heart seekers were dead. I don't know. We'll call it a win. But there we go, a clean sweep for the Bears, although they did take a goddamn pounding and they're all routing. Fair play to those Heart Seekers. What about the damn dirty Ogres then? Maybe the Heart Seekers can take them down, they have that big damage output. They nearly routed the Bears, if they didn't have the Buy Our Blood ability, they probably would have routed. They may have been able to win it here, putting a lot of damage on the Skull Crushers, but the Skull Crushers putting out an even amount of damage, if not more. Heart Seekers starting to struggle early, Ogres quickly overtaking in damage, this one especially, damn, these Heart Seekers... These ones have been absolutely munched. Ogre's barely taking any damage there, about half health. And it's going to be the end for the Heart Seekers pretty quick. They're getting banished. Ogre's making short work of them. And that leaves us then with the final battle. The top two, it's Warbear Riders and Crushers with great weapons. So Crushers, lots of armor, lots of armor piercing, anti-large. Bears, lots of armor, lots of armor piercing, anti-large. So both very similar units, the only two anti-large units in this competition. So no surprise that these two are at the top. Let's see who's got it though. Who is the freaking best? Both coming in, big chonky animals charging into each other. Both fairly low model counts. Bears coming off slightly worse in the charge. Those ogres do have a big 80 charge. That is going to help them a lot early on. And the bears... Taking damage, too much damage too quickly perhaps, but they do have the buy our blood ability. They will fight for 30 seconds longer than they probably should. So maybe that'll allow them to outlast these ogres. There we go, it's going off already on a couple of units. Are the ogres too far ahead though? They've got a lot of health left. They're still about halfway there. The bears are falling. The poor old bears are falling quick. And it's looking like the ogres are going to put the bears in the bin this day and prove that ogres are the best in the cavalry department. It's sad to see our precious bears going down, but the ogres, too strong, too strong. So there we have it. The ogres are the best, kind of expected. They are the most expensive unit in the competition. If you see crushers with great weapons running around, keep your cavalry away from them. Looks like bears are back on the menu for the ogres tonight. So with that, we conclude that the crushers are the best. They have wins all across the board, not a single loss to them. The bears, the same, but only losing to the crushers. And the Heart Seekers were putting in third place. But the Heart Seekers, interestingly here, have only three wins as well. The same as the Doom Knights and the Skull Crushers. So why did I give them the third place spot and not one of the other two? Well, let's look at some prices. You'll notice that the Heart Seekers are one of the cheapest units in this competition at 1400. They had the same wins and losses as the two more expensive units, Doom Knights and Skull Crushers. So better value for money, right? That's why they're in third place. Now the biggest anomaly here is obviously the Skull Crushers. They are the second most expensive unit in the competition at 1800, but their performance really didn't seem worth 1800. They lost to the 1400 cost Heart Seekers. You expect them to lose to the cheaper War Bears that cost 200 less than the Skull Crushers because the War Bears have the anti-large bonus. That makes them great in this competition. Skull Crushers are more anti-infantry, but so are the Heart Seekers. So why were they losing to them? To me, it seems like Skull Crushers have some problems. They're either too expensive and need to come down a bit, or you've got to give them something to make them more worth that price. The obvious answer is give them a bonus versus large, like the War Bears and Crushers. Hell, look at their weapon. They have a massive spear, typically an anti-large weapon. As they are, I don't really see a reason why you'd bring Skull Crushers over Blood Crushers, as they're virtually the same unit, and Skull Crushers cost 300 more than Blood Crushers. So why bother with this waste of money? The other slight anomaly here is, of course, the Great Longmer Riders way down the bottom of 1500 cost, topped by the 1000 cost Pox Riders, but we talked about why that was. They're not really designed for this competition, but still at 1500, it seems like they're not 
greatly worth the money. Maybe they need some armor piercing damage. Lord knows Cathay is a struggling faction right now, so that would really help them out. But there we go. For now, the crushers with great weapons are the top of the pile. One thing to remember though at this point in time, collisions in Warhammer 3 still aren't working quite properly and thus cavalry and collisions and chariots and collisions and stuff aren't quite working as they should. This is more of an issue against infantry but it may be playing a part here in these tests but because every unit is going to be affected by it I figured it's kind of fair. I thought about holding off on this video but I'm going to redo this anyway when the Warhammer 2 factions come to the game so we'll compare all the units new and old. But there we go, hope you've enjoyed this, thanks for watching, I will see you in the future.